So today in this video, we'll be seeing some tricks and tips to apply while solving nodal analysis questions. Okay, so we'll be seeing some simple tricks and also a matrix method which you can apply in uh, making the task of solving the nodal analysis questions very easily. Okay, so let us consider a very simple question first. The question is to find the node voltage V. Okay, so this, can, this question is having only one node. You need to find the voltage of that node. How to uh, do this question in a very quick manner without actually thinking of nodal analysis equation or writing the equation. Okay, so I'm going to just apply Ohm's law here. You know that Ohm's law V is equal to I into R, right? So here V is a voltage which you need to find. I is the current. Current will be the sum of currents coming and going, right? So you have to apply that equation. Then R is only one resistance, which is 10. So you have to find the, put the value R is 10. So V will be equal to I into 10. Now what is I? You can see there are two current sources. Current source of 2 ampere, current source of 8 ampere. One is coming and one is leaving. So you don't have to, you don't have to sum, you have to take the difference. Now 2 ampere is coming and 8 ampere is leaving. So we generally take the currents which is coming is positive and currents which is leaving are negative. Okay, so it will be 2 which is plus and minus 8 since 8 ampere is leaving. So this will be your total current. So it is minus 6 into 10 which will be equal to minus 60 volt. So if the question is having only one node, you can apply these type of tricks very easily you don't need to think about v by uh, 10 or plus 2 plus 8 likewise you don't have to think just apply ohm's law okay so since you need to find voltage and you have current and resistance you can apply ohm's law okay next one we are moving on to little bit complicated questions so there what all tricks you can apply let's see now the next trick we are going to apply is a matrix method which you can uh, use in networks which is having only resistors and current sources generally uh, and if the questions are very complicated i would uh, i would prefer you or i would suggest you to uh, do the normal method of uh, first marking the cur current directions and then writing the equations that will be uh, good right otherwise some mistakes can come but if the uh, the circuit is having only resistances and current sources you can apply this question okay so this method okay so this question is to find the voltages v1 and v2 which are unknowns now you know that we can write the current again according to ohm's law as v by r is equal to i now this this equation we are going to form as a matrix to solve my equation v by r is equal to i and i'm going to convert this to a matrix form and then use that matrix to solve for v1 and v2 so that is our idea okay so first let's form a resistance matrix now how the resistance matrix needs to be formed i'll tell you so we are having two nodes one with voltage v1 one with voltage v2 so for the node with voltage v1 which all resistors are connected to the node directly there are two resistors connected to it with value 2 ohm and 2 ohm right so take 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 now why we are forming 1 by 2 because we will we are going to write the form v by r or v into 1 by r or you can write it is 1 by r into v is equal to i right so that's why we are taking 1 by r so that's why we are writing 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 so here these two resistors are directly connected to it to the node with voltage v1 so 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 now the the next node for which we are going to write the equation is node with voltage v2 and these two nodes with v1 voltage and v2 voltage is sharing this 1 by uh, this 2 ohm resistance right so put a minus 1 by 2 here now why minus because they are sharing it so there is a minus coming okay again so this into i'll remove this into v1 okay again we are going to 
form the equation for V2 node or the node with voltage V2, which all resistors are directly connected to it. That is 2 ohm and 8 ohm. So 1 by 2 plus 1 by 8, which I have written here. Then again, this 2 ohm is shared between these two nodes. So we'll put a minus 1 by 2 here also. Okay, so the diagonal elements are the sharing resistors and this elements or these two elements are the resistors for that branch which is 2 ohm and 2 ohm directly. Okay, so here also and here 8 ohm and 2 ohm. We have considered the sharing resistances separately. Then this into V2 equal to I1, I2. Now you know the values for I1 and I2. And first we'll look for I1. Let's look into the node with voltage V1. So which all currents are coming to the node? 2 ampere is coming to the node with voltage V1. And 4 ampere is leaving. So it is 2. 2 since, it, since the current is coming. And since 4 ampere is leaving, 2 minus 4. Okay. 2 minus 4 is minus 2. Then let's look for I2. So the next node... Again, having two currents, 4 ampere is coming towards the node, 7 ampere is also coming towards the node. So, 4 plus 7, which is equal to 11, equal to 11. So, this is your matrix form. Now, if you solve this matrix, you will be getting the values for V1 and V2. You can apply matrix uh, solving methods or you can again form some equations and very easily you can solve. Now, the advantage of forming these equations is that you don't have to mark the current directions for each and every branch, right? We have directly taken the resistors here and also here. Then the sharing resistors we have directly taken here and here and we have multiplied with the voltage. That is 1 by resistance into voltage is equal to current. That is V by R equal to I. This is your trick, okay? Now, solve for these two equations. First, form the equations and solve for it. The equations you will be getting by just doing the matrix multiplication. The equations you are getting is 2V1 minus V2 equal to minus 4. And the next equation you are getting is minus 4V1 plus 5V2 equal to 88. Okay. Just solve these two equations, you will be getting the values for V1 equal to 11.33 volt and V2 equal to 26.66 volt. Okay. Now, if you have doubt in this method, you can directly apply the KVL, sorry, you can directly apply the nodal analysis first by marking the direction of currents in all branches, then writing any, uh, writing each equations and then you can solve. Then also you will be getting the values is V1 equal to 11.33 and V2 equal to 26.66. The next question is this. You need to find what is the voltage V. Okay, so uh, rather than considering the node in the beginning, first we will be considering these three as three various branches or three separate branches. And I am going to write the current equations for these three branches individually and then I will be combining. Okay, let's see how the task is. Okay, so this branch we are going to call it as I1 current is in that branch. And what will be that current? The current will be flowing from the positive terminal of the battery. So it will be 10 minus V by 2 is I1. I2 is directly given. It is 4 amperes. Right, then. I am not going to consider the direction of current or anything. I am just writing the currents. Okay. Third one is I3. Again, the current is will be starting from the positive terminal of the battery. So, it is 7 minus V by 3. Okay. So, I have just not considered the direction of current from which branch to which branch or anything. I have just written the three currents. Now, let's see how the current flowing is happening. So, the current will be flowing from the positive terminal of the battery here and also from here. So these two currents that is I1 and I3 is flowing towards the node and very clearly it is seen that there is a current source. Downward direction means away from the node. So how can you write it? The equation form or if you write KCL you can write it as I1 plus I3 is equal to I2. 
I2 is directly given, which is 4 ampere. And I1 and I3 are in the form of equations. I1 is 10 minus V by 2 plus 7 minus V by 3 equal to 4 ampere. And if you solve for this, you will be getting the value for V is equal to 4 volt. Okay. So, this is another method you can apply. That is, first, rather than looking for the direction of current, just mark the or uh, find the equations of current for each branches separately and then try to combine it. Okay. So, this is another way of doing nodal analysis. So, generally what we do is, as I have uh, said in the beginning, first we will be marking the direction of currents in each and every branch and then we will be writing the equations as a whole. This is a simple question but in bigger networks it is difficult. So, if you try to do these individual current equations then try to combine it will be little bit simpler. Okay. So, here the voltage we have obtained is 4 volt and if you substitute 4 volt in this equation you will be getting 4 ampere. Okay. So, these are some tricks which you can apply in solving nodal analysis questions because nodal analysis is a very important part in network and also in the entire electronics syllabus. Okay. You can apply it in over various subjects not just in network but other subjects also. So, it is very important and a lot of people uh, find it very difficult to uh, do it. So, I really hope that you found these tricks useful. If yes, please do give it a thumbs up and also share it with your friends. And if you want more videos, please do subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and keep on watching.